Alright, so I'm just going to do a quick update. What you guys are looking at. So basically, um, Kim came over and we got Savina, um, she was up on the shelf in the closet and uh, so we got her and um, have moved her into a quiet room, the room next door and it's now a quiet, dark room. She has access, she's on the catio actually, I can show you. But she has uh, her little feral cat den is set up on the catio with the heating pad and food and water, everything she needs. And then she also has access to the room if she wants it. Um, because it was, it's, she wasn't, a, she's not a good candidate for what there's her little setup. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you can't see that. You guys should have volume on the main cam. More than that. Okay. I'm going to talk quietly though, so, so um, get your headphones if you can't hear, because I need to, I'm trying to be quiet, because these guys have had a, kind of a stressful day. Um, if you can hear the rain, you should be able to hear me because I'm talking way louder than the rain. Um, but anyway, the, um, I don't know why the rain would be so loud because it's way further away from the camera too. Um, but anyway, hopefully that's better. Um, so, um, so Savina was clearly, uh, it's definitely a high stress cat. She was very fearful and, uh, definitely, um, was, is not a great candidate for what I was hoping to do with this round. Um, Neelix is a great candidate for it. She's perfect. Um, but um, I didn't want to keep Savina in with Neelix because I think Savina is um, her anxiety and her just how uh, excitable and fearful and, and you know just flying around the room and all of that. Um, it's not good for her to be feeling that way and it's not good for Neelix to be in a room with a cat like that. So um, I'm hoping that, so Savina's sort of in the decompression room where there will be minimal minimal interaction. Um, I'm not gonna put a camera in there but so the lights can, are gonna be completely off um, and she'll just have the daylight and um, it's gonna be quiet and I'm just gonna go in to put new water in um, and other than that, she'll be by herself, uh, and we'll see how she does that way if she starts to feel a little bit less stressed. Um, and then for Neelix, Neelix has Elian here with her for at least a couple more days, so that's good. Um, and then we'll see, we'll see, um, if, if, if I could tell, if I knew if Kestrel was pregnant, then I would put her in and then problem would be solved. Um, but if Kestrel's not pregnant, then um, we'll either just have Neelix in here on her own or I'll try to trap someone else to bring in that's about the same amount pregnant as I think Neelix is. But So we're kind of up in the air again at this point, but, um, and we'll wait and see if, if, if the universe is is happy with us and is being nice to us, then um, maybe Savina isn't pregnant after all and we can just stay here and return her. That would be the nicest thing for her since she is so um, uh, 
not nervous being here. But at least now she has she has access to the catio and it's very comfortable for her out there and she can stay out there, you know, for days if she wants to. Um, and I'll just make sure she has food and water and um, someone did use the litter box in here, which is which is good. I'm not sure who it was. It might have been her. So we'll just see. We'll kind of learn as we go with that. Um, yeah, Sable. Um, Sable is the cat at the feeding station who um, is is quite pregnant. She's she's been coming around. Um, She's about, probably, I would say, two weeks away from having her babies. She's the one I was talking about a couple of days ago that um, I had considered bringing in, but um, there's no one else that I could have brought in with her because nobody, they're all probably four weeks behind her. And she, I talked to the property owner, she, he knows her and he knows that where she's nesting. And it's a, he said it's one of the safer locations on the property. It's inside a barn and kind of up in an area that predators can't really get to. So um, I thought that um, since I wanted to bring in two together, which may not work out anyway, but, um, and since she's in a relatively good situation, whereas these guys, we don't know the situation, um, that's why she she's not coming in. Um, but I do think that um, Sable's personality is closer to Sloney than um, anyone else. So she's not as curious about us, but she does come up pretty close and um, she seems curious about us, which I think is um, a good sign for her being a good candidate maybe to come in. So we'll see about that. Um, so yeah, Scout or... There are going to be a number of options out there. Um, I did want to bring them in at the same time, but, um, you know, you can't really make plans with this sort of stuff, we we'll just roll with it. Um, so, what else? Um, I know I can see the chat. You guys can't see my head. So, um, I'm going to try to not come back in here until tomorrow so these guys have a nice break from humans. Um, um, Eliane has had her pain meds for the day so she's good to go. Her incision looked great. Um, Neelix is in the cabinet of solitude which is an approved birthing location so I'm uh, happy about that. She also has some food in there with her if she gets hungry and I did um, I did give her like a little syringe of food when she was in my lap early, earlier. Um, and so she has had a, a light snack uh, with some water mixed in, um, but it's not unusual for them to not eat for the first day or two and to sort of, you know, stay close to home. Uh, the catio is shut right now, but um, I may open it back up again for these guys because uh, they're not as reactive as Sabina and um, like I was able to just wrap Neelix in a blanket earlier when she was on the catio so I think it would actually be fine for them to be out there um, depending on how they how they do. Um, I'm just going to keep them in here for now but I would like them to be able to have access to it at some point. We'll see how they do. Um, just going to have to take it hour by hour. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not a question of whether they got along. They were doing okay because they were scared and, and the catios felt like the safest place for them. And so that's where they all went. Um, it's more, it's more just when I come in, um, how, how nervous Lena gets. And Neelix has, I think, some potential to have positive interactions and ha have some socialization before she has her babies. And I think it's really important to, to um, nurture that and not to put her at risk of uh, having a bad experience. And I think having Savina in here and 
Savina's, um, Savina's like at the opposite end of the spectrum. And uh, it just would be, I think, detrimental to Neelix to be around uh, Savina. So um, since Eliane is in here, um, she at least has a companion for now if she wants one. Um, and uh, then we'll just see how things go. She might be fine. I mean, they're each in their own little safe place right now. But um, I do think it would be nice for them, for her to have a companion. Um, the capture of Sabina, how did we do it? Is that the question? Um, the, uh, well, we tried a few different things, but um, we ended up um, putting the Karanda Tower in so she could have something to jump off the shelf onto. And then we opened the catio and put the feral cat den on the catio. And then um, when she ran into the catio, she went right into the feral cat den and then I was able to close the door on that. And, so, and then, um, so that's how it happened. There, was a, there were a few um, failed attempts prior to that to, we thought maybe we could use the um, easy nabber to, to sort of grab her off the shelf, but that did not work at all because it's pretty high. Um, but just putting her on the catio. What is that? Something strange happening from here. machine dying mid-load um yeah it was definitely we both had some adrenaline going for sure uh Sabina is definitely um more aggressive the more aggressive than other cats we, any other cat we've had here actually um but it's not because she's an aggressive cat it's because she's she's afraid and uh, she feels threatened, so it's not, she's not, I don't want to call her an aggressive cat, it's just that her reaction to feeling threatened is um, that she will fight rather than flight. So, um, so anyway, hopefully now everything will be a bit calmer and uh, these guys can sort of relax a bit. Um, I'm not going to come back. I'm going to try to stay away as long as possible. Um, they have plenty of food and water. And it's nice and dark in here. And so, that's good. So, one thing... Uh, one thing I learned when I was in San Francisco doing tech startups is that if you're going to fail, fail fast. And so um, that's why, as soon as I, as soon as I sort of realized this was likely to not be a good scenario, um, I wanted to just get it over with and change it up so that we can all we can just get get on the right track as quickly as possible. So um, why no more gowning? That is a good question. Um, up here, these guys don't have any symptoms of upper respiratory. Um, they didn't uh, fluoresce. They're not, so they're not like, um, there's nothing obviously wrong with them, um, but I am not, I am gloving and gowning going into Noel's room and I'm changing clothes and washing hands before I go home. So in essence, sort of gloving and gowning, but um, not, uh, 
not like following ISO protocol because we don't have any sort of reason to do that. <laughs> Knock on wood, hopefully. <laughs> so we're hoping that these guys are as healthy as, you know, healthy as they are from the colony. Yeah, it is a bummer about the washing machine. It was in mid, mid wash. Maybe it just needs a nap. Um, so I'll see how they do tomorrow. I, I am going to come in, um, I'm going to come in in the morning-ish to give Elian another dose of pain meds. So I'll see how they are at that point. I'll see if they've relaxed at all. Um, With the catio window closed, the feel away will um, probably be more apparent in the room. Hopefully that will help a bit. Um, Noel are doing great after their spays. Both of them are doing very well. So they got their pain meds this morning. Uh, they were purring up a storm. They're doing very well. So Kestrel, um, that's an excellent question. Um, if she, I'm, I'm holding on to her for at least another week um, until Dr. Ferguson comes and we'll see if we can um, get another feel at that point and just confirm that she's not pregnant. Um, if she is pregnant, then I will put her in here with uh, Neelix and see how that goes. Um, depending on how Neelix is doing, and um, so that's sort of uh, one of the many up in the air things right now. So the situation can change minute by minute, but I think I, I feel better about the two in this room are I think pretty good, and um, the. Uh, and uh, hopefully Savina will will feel better. I think she's her the situation in the next room is I think going to be better for her. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Elian and Elix are getting along fine. Yeah, I mean, I see. I, I see. It seems likely that Kestrel would have a calming effect. Um, she has the run of the house right now. Um, I'm gonna. I'll see how the girls are doing tomorrow. I may or may not bring her in. Um, we'll just see how things go. Um, Doctor F is. We've talked about her coming over with the ultrasound, but um, there's no point in her doing it until they're far enough along in the pregnancy. Otherwise, it just it won't detect anything. So we we need to wait a little bit all around. Because you can't really detect. Um, I know. So X-ray you can't detect till 42 days minimum. And. Um, Ultrasound is maybe a little bit earlier than that, but um, there's really no way to detect it until you're halfway or more than halfway along in the pregnancy. Um, Neelix and Elian have done, Neelix actually is doing really well. Um, it's unfortunate that Savina, that, that Savina has been so um, stressful for everybody. Um, Neelix, I think, and I made really good progress when she first came out and I first let her in the room and she was in my lap and she did really well. I think she's um, going to be at least receptive to some interaction, at least before the babies come. I don't know if she could totally change once, once the babies come and we'll just work with what we, what we get there. Um, 
I don't know if she has potential to be socialized, particularly when there are babies involved, but um, I do think that there's potential for her to be less stressed um, and to have some positive inter interactions with me, which I'm hoping will make her less stressed when she has the babies and when I have to take them to weigh them or that sort of thing. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, but she, when I, I, I uh, went and got her and just held her for a little bit after um, sort of the first kerfuffle of the day, and she was definitely nervous, um, more nervous than she had been the day before, so her stress level was higher than it was the day before. Um, and so I think if I let them just be in this room um, by themselves and I don't bother them, then I think they'll, I think by tomorrow they'll be feeling a bit better. And hopefully they'll, they'll go and uh, eat some food and go to the bathroom and stuff, so. So we'll see. As, as always, you never know. I never know what you're going to find when you tune in. I never know what I'm going to find. Especially working with Pharaohs, it's been quite, um, quite interesting. But, um, Savina is now very cozy on, on the catio out in the other room, and I think that, uh, so she'll stay warm, she'll be able to, she'll stay dry, she'll stay warm, she has food right there, water right there. So I think maybe leaving her like that for a, a little bit will be good. I will see. So definitely not how I envisioned this, this phase happening, but um, we're just gonna roll with it and do the best we can and um, Hopefully at the end of it we'll have healthy moms and healthy babies if they're pregnant or healthy moms with spades we get to go back sooner. So I'm going to go because I don't want to uh, be in here any longer than I need to be. So we'll just keep an eye on them over the cans for the next little bit and um, I think I think that's about the best we can do for now. So, it's very, it's always exciting.